Pro Tools has three types of plugins. Native plugins, DSP plugins, and some other stuff called Audio Suite. What's up, y'all? This is your boy, Wavy Wayne. Today, we're going to take an in-depth look at Audio Suite plugins, all right? Now, there are a few different types of real-time plugins, native and DSP. Both of those are real-time plugins. Audio Suite is a non-real-time plugin format. Basically, it is a file-based plugin format, whereas when you process an audio clip using uh, Audio Suite, it will actually create a new audio file with whatever process that you've chosen. Unlike other plugins that you insert directly on the track, whether it's real, whether it's a native or DSP, those plugins actually um, process the audio in real time during playback and recording. Audio Suite is totally different. Again, it'll write a brand new file with whatever process that you've chosen. So your computer is not no longer processing that audio, but instead there'll be a new file. Let's take a look at it. Now, to access Audio Suite plugins, you simply just go up to the Audio Suite menu. All right. Now, one of my favorite Audio Suite plugins, as you see, is the Verify plugin. I've even uh, saved it as a little top one, so it's always right there. Now, part of what you need to do when you have an Audio Suite plugin, one of the main things you need to remember is that uh, you have to have a selection of audio. This is not going to affect the whole track. It's only going to affect whatever portion of audio you actually have selected. All right. So verify plugin is this dope little tape stop effect. Um, and basically, all I have to do is make a selection over the set, the part of audio that I want to affect, and then hit render with this plugin. Um, it already has the parameters set how I like them for verify. So I just hit render. Boom. And then let's hear what this effect sounds like. And I felt you slipping away, but I know one day. Right? It gives you that kind of tape stop effect. Right? Let's undo that. Cool. Now, let's take a look at a couple of the controls within the actual Audio Suite plugin. At the top left, we have which Audio Suite plugin that you're accessing. And most real time plugins that you'll have will have an Audio Suite counterpart that works pretty much exactly the same, except that you have to actually hit this render button once you set the settings inside of the plugin. All right. So, this is where you can change which Audio Suite plugin you're using. Next, I'm just going to skip over to where this blue button is, right? This blue. This button that says use and playlist needs to be active when you want to use Audio Suite plugins. Um, otherwise, if using playlist is not active, when you process a selection, that new audio clip that was uh, processed will be dropped off into the clips list, but it won't replace your selection here in the edit playlist. So most of the time, you just want to keep that lit blue and make sure that when you hit uh, render, it'll actually replace your selection with that new processed audio file. Um, let's see what else you also have the choice between create a continuous file and entire selection. Um, so if I choose to create a continuous file, basically what that means is that if I have multiple clips selected and I do an audio suite process, it's going to process, uh, my entire selection, right? Entire selection. This is my input mode and my output mode. So I'm sorry, my output mode and my input mode. So on the input mode, it says entire selection. So my entire selection is going to be treated as if it was one file. And then the output mode is going to create a continuous file. Again, one file will be created. So I'm going to hit render here. And you'll see that now this entire audio file slows down. And you can kind of see by looking at the waveform. You are building dreams and I hope. Right, it slows down from the entire beginning all the way to the end. Let's undo that here. Now, another way that I can change this is say if I wanted to process all these clips at one time and have each one of the individual clips slow down on their own using the verify effect, then I would change the entire selection to clip by clip. And then if you see my output mode changes to create individual files. And when I process this like this, now each one of these started if I had a need to do, <laughs> dot every I can see. That might be cool, but I don't know if Lydia gonna like that. So we're gonna undo that. 
But that is the audio suite process, all right? Um, again, you have to have a selection of audio. Choose whatever parameters, change whatever parameters you want to within the actual plugin, and then go ahead and hit render, all right? Now, I'm going to show you how I like to create a reverse reverb effect using audio suite plugins. Um, so, let's see. Well, how do we start off here? You started out real nice. So, the first step I'm going to do here is actually duplicate the track that I'm working on. So, so I have a similar track. And I'm just going to grab and copy the first word. You started, you start, you start, you started. So, I'm just going to copy that little U. I'm going to reverse it. Let me clean this whole little clip up, okay? I'm going to copy this section. Command C. Hit my semicolon to bring this down to the track beneath. And I'm paste it. All right. And then the first thing I'm going to do is go up to the audio suite menu and I'm going to grab a reverb. And let's go with D-verb. It's pretty classic. Everybody has the D-verb. Um, what I want to do is extend my selection here so that the reverb tail actually has room to get printed as well. And I will just go ahead and render down this reverb. Oops. So I need to make sure that my output mode is set to entire selection and create a continuous file here render boom let's just listen to that cool just a little of that and next thing i'm going to do is actually reverse this so i'm going to go up to the audio suite plugin menu again go down the other and choose reverse and reverse this reverb all right now, you see how quiet that is. I'm just going to use my clip gain to make that a little bit louder so we sure that we can hear that tail a little bit more. And basically what I want to do now is move this to line up with the original. And I'm just going to move that right up there. And I'm going to line it up with the original phrase. And I can actually get rid of this little you started. I just want that reverb tail really. Put a little fade on there. Let's listen to what that might sound like. You started out. You started out real uh, nice. Yeah. I like that. It might need a little bit more trimming here. I'm going to trim it off a little bit more. Move it up a little bit. You started out real nice. Cool. And oftentimes this uh a uh, reverb would like a, to have a little, I mean, this reverse reverb, I'll add a little more reverb so that it doesn't cut off abruptly. And I'll even send it over to a delay, too. Let's take it. You started out real nice. Cool, I like that. Maybe even EQ it. You start, you started out real nice. All right? And that's the reverb effect, the reverse reverb effect. That's how you do it, and that's how you do it using Audio Suite plugins. Again, Audio Suite plugins is a non real time plugin. It's all file based, where you actually have to render and process that uh, effect down to a new audio file. That's the Wavy Way tip of the day. If you like this video and you want me to keep making more videos, be sure to leave a comment down below. I'll get to your suggestions, I'll answer your questions. Like, comment, and subscribe. And you know what you gotta do. You gots to be dope.